guys, a very good evening and welcome to this live session brought to you by Talent Sprint. I hope all of you are healthy and so is your preparation for the aptitude test conducted by various IT companies for the recruitment, right? Like you all must be aware, today's session is on the topic of blood relations, which constitutes a part of uh, the reasoning aptitude section of your exams, right? And uh, a very interesting topic, right? Known to all of us. And we also know how to answer questions using the method where we draw a family tree for the given uh, relationships and try to establish or connect uh, the two given persons there. But then there are smarter ways to solve and answer questions from this topic. So that is what we are going to look at in the session today, right? Smart ways to solve questions from blood relations. But before we get to that, let me uh, quickly see how many of you have joined the session today. I see three, four of you already participating in the chat, right? We have uh, Ankama, uh, then we have Naga Venkatesh, Vinod. So hi guys, welcome to this session. Thank you for uh, joining us. I hope your preparation is all in high gear, right? There is a lot of exams, uh, aptitude tests conducted by all these IT companies, right? Yeah, we also have uh, M. Lulun who says I'm here, sir. Hi. So before we, you know, start working on various questions from the topic of blood relations, let me uh, tell you that there is a chat box which is available beside your video screen. You can use that to interact with us here, right? Like you can see many of uh, your friends have already you know, started chatting with us. So the most recent one is from Ayush. Ayush says, hi, hi, Ayush. I hope you are doing well and your preparation also is in full swing. So tell me, how do you guys find this topic of blood relations? You know that this is a very commonly asked uh, question in this exam, right? And, and, and not just... Uh, I, um, aptitude tests conducted by IT companies, but even otherwise, blood relations is a very important part of uh, reasoning aptitude, right? The most common questions uh, from this topic are those where, uh, you know, where we are asked to establish the relationship between a person who is pointing to a photograph and explaining the relationship in a uh, in a lengthy way, right? So we kind of cut down the given statement into parts, simplify each of these parts, and then connect. Uh, these together right stitch these parts together to get the relationship between the man who is pointing towards the photograph and the person in the photograph right then there are questions where we have we are given uh, symbols and their meanings in terms of relationships like for example a percentage b means a is the father of b a plus b means a is the mother of b and so on and then we are given an equation using those symbols and our job is to find out the relationship between the two extreme persons, right, usually. So, I'm sure all of you have seen such questions and have come across these in your test, right? So, how do you find this topic? Easy, difficult, very easy? I'm sure the answer would be easy. There's nothing complex about blood relations, right? Uh, you, you need to understand the relationships properly, right? I mean, different relationships like, you know, very common again, right? Mother-in-law, father-in-law, brother-in-law sister-in-law, uncle, aunt. I mean, this is not something that one has to learn because we have been, uh, we, we, we see these relations in our life since our childhood, right? Uh, except the ones uh, pertaining to in-laws, all the others like grandmother, grandfather, uncle, aunt, nephew, niece, all these are there uh, in, in our family, right? So we understand what these relationships mean. Again, in-laws come into picture when, you know, when you or someone in your family gets married right it's like relationship as per the law right not a blood relation but a relationship as per the law like for example father-in-law father-in-law is your spouse's father right your spouse mean your wife or your husband depending on your gender there similarly mother-in-law is your spouse's mother right then daughter-in-law daughter-in-law means what daughter-in-law is your son's wife you you understand all these in-laws relationship like i've mentioned are those which come into picture when you or someone in your family gets married. Like, like in the case, usually when I ask uh, about the uh, relationship uh, related to in-laws, the common answer is that when you get married, these things come into picture. But that's not the case, right? It need not be you. It can be you or, you know, someone 
uh, in in your family right either your sibling or your son or your daughter getting it like like for example uh, mother in law of course is your spouse's mother right father in law is your spouse's father so that is when you get married but son in law is your daughter's husband so it's not you who has got married here it is your daughter who has got married and that person whom she gets married to is known as son is law son in law so so try and understand he's like your son right your daughter's husband is like your son as per the law right then daughter in law your son's wife is your daughter in law right then brother in law now brother in law is something where you need to pay attention there are two types of you know uh, brothers in law right one is on your spouse's side like your spouse's brother is your brother in law right your wife's brother is your brother in law right for a uh, for a woman her husband's brother is brother in law right like a brother right like a brother as per the law but then the other one is your uh, you know your siblings uh, husband your sister's husband like like my sister's husband is my brother in law right my wife's brother is brother in law sister's husband is also brother in law similarly sister in law can be your spouse's sister your wife's sister or your husband's sister or your brother's wife your brother's wife is like your sister as per the law so this clarity has to be there because these are commonly used relations especially those uh, pertaining to in-laws in the questions that are asked in uh, these exams right all others are very general right grandmother grandfather uncle aunt nephew niece etc right again uh, one more important point uh, that we need to understand here is about the paternal relationships and the maternal uh, relationships here like like for example your who, who's your grandfather your grandfather is your parents father right your parents father is your grandfather now it can be your mother's father or your father's father both are known as grandfathers but if you have to be specific how do you uh, how do you denote those relationships then then you call it as uh, either a paternal grandfather or maternal grandfather like like your father's father is your grandfather but specifically paternal grandfather right mother's father is also your grandfather but to be specific maternal grandfather right so all the relationships on the father's side right on your father's family side are paternal relationships those on the mother's side right the, the family from which your mother comes from right are maternal relationships similarly uh, you know uncle uncle is your parents brother your parents brother is your uncle your father's brother is your uncle your mother's brother is also your uncle but then maternal uncle and paternal uncle right maternal aunt paternal aunt maternal grandmother paternal grandmother okay and then father and mother i mean those are like straight right so simple i think uh, it's all about uh, these different uh, relationships i'm sure all of you are thorough with these if not just look at the list that we have in our uh, videos uh, from the topic of blood relations right i'm sure all of you know that we have got 700 plus videos covering all these uh, topics from aptitude right quantitative aptitude reasoning aptitude or verbal aptitude right and all these videos cover uh, all the topics uh, which which come across uh, all these three sections in, in the exams right and then there are videos for the other technical subjects so you can refer to those videos just in case you want to be uh, you know want to revise these relationships once again right and, and understand them thoroughly okay now what we are going to do in the session today is solve a few questions right again uh, you must be aware that uh, at, at talent sprint each topic is divided uh, or, or i would say the videos for any given topic is at model level right so when it comes to blood relations we usually have you know three models now a model here is nothing but a question type three types of questions are asked in blood relations okay so there are three models right each uh, model has got a video which explains you what is the question type how do you solve such questions what should be the traditional method what is the smart way of solving it what are the important points to be noted etc so three models with uh, one introduction video you can just refer to that anytime uh, 24 by 7 uh, when you have to learn however in, in the session today we'll be We'll, we may not be covering f the very basics of this topic, but solve some questions and try to understand the concepts uh, by solving these questions there. Okay, so shall we get started? I'll, I'll share my video screen now uh, and, and present the questions one after the other. I'll give you some appropriate time to attempt each one of these questions and then explain you the solution. All right.
Meanwhile, I think I've got a few responses here uh, on the question that I had asked, right? How do you find this topic of blood relations? So, uh, you know, there's one person who says it is like different and confusing. Well, yes, at times uh, questions from blood relations are a little confusing. But like I always say, if you are thorough uh, in the basics and the fundamentals of each of these topics, then it should be easy, right? Never depend too much on shortcut. A shortcut is useful, right? No doubt. But learning only a shortcut without knowing the concept behind it, without knowing the uh, you know basics thoroughly can be risky, okay? So first, always you should know what is the traditional way of solving the question, right? Let's say you're not supposed to use a shortcut. Then how do you solve it? Then how do you actually explain it? That part has to be very clear, right? The formula is not important. Remember, the formula is not important. What happens behind the formula is more important. Usually, we don't have any formulae to deal with when it comes to reasoning aptitude. But when you look at the subject of quantitative aptitude, right? Therefore, almost every question we have a shortcut formula or a formula can be derived, so to say. Now, simply learning this formula by heart and getting ready for the exam is too risky, like I've mentioned in the past, right? You have to know what actually has happened behind this, right? How did we arrive at this formula? If you're thorough with that, then you're done. Then you're fully geared up to take these exams so one point was that this is like a little different and confusing then uh, Ayush Thakur mentions that blood relations considering pictures are confusing so I told you right there's one question type uh, one one of the models in fact model 3 from blood relations is where we talk about these questions which starts like pointing to a photograph a man said or pointing to a photograph a woman said right and they describe the relationship we have to understand the description and get the exact relationship there, right? The direct relationship. So those seem to be uh, confusing for Ayush. And I'm sure not just Ayush, but many others there. So we also have uh, a couple of questions on that pattern. We'll take it up today. Any other point there? Yeah. I think a few more have joined. Uh, Rishikesh, Baidya, Swati Reddy. And uh, yeah. So good, good to see you all. I think time to get started now. So let me share my screen, present the question to you all. And then here's the first one. Look at this. What does it say? Uh, it says read the information carefully and answer the given question. So this is the model one, right? The first question type uh, from blood relations. So here we have been given uh, different symbols and their meanings. Like, like P at the rate Q means P is the father of Q. P plus Q means P is the husband of Q. P dollar Q means P is the brother of Q. P percentage Q means P is the mother of Q. P ampersand Q means P is the sister of Q. So basically at the rate means father, plus means husband, dollar means brother, percentage is mother, ampersand is sister. And now look at the question. It says how is B related to E in this expression? So there's an expression given to us. What is that ex expression? A at the rate B percentage C ampersand D plus E. So how is B related to E? We have to establish the relationship between B and E as per the given uh, explanation, right? Uh, meanings of each of these symbols. How is B related to E? So I, I'll give you what? A minute uh, to solve this one, right? Uh, let me tell you, it shouldn't take more than 30 seconds. But since we are connected to a digital medium, I would give you a little more time. One minute is what you have and your time starts now. Let us see how many of you get this right. I'm sure the question is very easy. You know how to solve such questions, right? Draw the family tree and then get the relationship. So try and do that. Your time has already started. All right, so the time is up and glad to see that many of you have marked the answers to this question, answer to this question, right? So Swati Reddy says it to be mother-in-law and Manohar Kumar Rishi has also got option three as the answer, which is mother-in-law. Rishikesh Baidya also says option three. There's Lulun who says this, he's got no idea about how to attempt this one. Paramjit has got option two. Now here comes the difference. Paramjit says it should be granddaughter, option two. And so uh, says Hari Krishna, right? Hari Krishna has also got option two. But then Vinod and Ayush Thakur have got option three. Sheikh Rahman has also got option three. So... You know, most of you have got option three as answer, mother-in-law, but then there are a few who have got option two, granddaughter. And one person says, I have no idea. 
So let's let's take it up. I think time is up now. Let's discuss the solution. So like you see, we have to read the information. Information here is nothing but these uh, symbols and their meanings given to us and answer the given question. Okay. Now do not waste too much time in uh, reading these instructions there. I mean, you will anyway have to refer it, uh, refer back to it when you are looking at the expression, right? So, p at the rate q means p is the father of q. I mean, you know that's what is usually given there. p plus q means p is the husband of q. p dollar q means p is the brother of q. Percentage q means p is the mother of q. p ampersand q means p is the sister of q. The only one point that you'll have to be careful about while answering or while reading these uh, instructions here, directions here, is that uh, how is the a connection given to us like p at the rate q means p is the father of q i mean simply if you look at at the rate and father and you know come to a conclusion that at the rate means father it can be risky you you may end up getting a wrong answer because sometimes it's it's given uh, a little differently right instead of saying p at the rate q means p is the father of q they may say p at the rate q means q is the father of p or p dollar q means q is the brother of p now in a hurry uh, to solve the question what we fail to observe is it was from q to p and not from p to q and we end up uh, arriving at wrong answer so just be careful about that right is it always from p to q or q to p okay now the question here is how is b related to e in the expression a at the rate b percentage c ampersand d plus e now do you do draw the family tree now there are different ways of drawing the family tree you can have your own notation right but what we usually follow is covered in detail in the video so i would uh, you know suggest you all to go through the video uh, blood relations video of talent print and understand the notation because i'm going to use the same notation here right simple we just try to uh, you know use arrows uh, to connect different persons right and the way we draw arrows vertical or horizontal depends on the generation of these persons right if two persons belong to the same generation then we try to put them in the same row right if two persons are from different generations then we try to put them in a uh, in, in different rows right i mean higher generation next generation and and so on so that's that's one thing that you have to remember so here you look at the first part a at the rate b a at the rate b means what a is the father of b right a at the rate b means a is the father of b so a is the father of b so clearly a is in the generation above b a is the father of b so this is how you draw it a is the father of b right why are we writing b under a because b comes to the, belongs to the next generation a is in a higher generation you, you're getting it so that's the idea and connect them with the help of an arrow right a is the father of you now the other point to be noted here is the gender see you know when you talk about a relationship you will be able to identify the gender right a at the rate b means what a is a male person what is b gender that is not known to us right again be careful sometimes or in fact most of the times i find that when the relation is given as a is the father of b you know students quickly respond saying that b is the son of a but that's wrong that need not be correct because when a is the father of b b can be the son of a or daughter of a both are possible you're getting it b gender is not known to us what is only known to us is a gender and since a is male we'll represent a using a using this symbol i mean no offense but we use these symbols to represent right you can also interchange right nothing wrong with that but since we have been following that uh, since our very first video let's continue the same process so a is the father of b next b percentage c connect c to b b percentage c percentage means what uh, mother b is the mother of c b is the mother of c now understand b is the mother female right so uh, you know indicate the gender there right b is the mother b is a female person mother of c can you tell me what is the gender of c gender of c is not known to us as of now the gender of c is not known to us all right c can be the son of b or the daughter of b next c ampersand a ampersand means sister right C is the sister of D. Now, sisters are in the same generation, right? They are siblings. They belong to the same generation. So, like I've mentioned earlier, we'll put them both. We'll, we'll put both of them in the same row. So, C is the sister of D. C is the sister of D. C is the sister of D. Right? C is the sister of D. Now, C is the sister. So, female. What is D's gender? It's not known to us. D can be the sister of C or brother of C. Both are possible. And look at the last part. D plus E. Plus means what? Husband. Right? D is the husband of E. D is the husband of E. Understand, D is the husband of E. Now, the moment you know D is the husband of E, we know D is a male person. And obviously, E has to be a female person. Now, don't argue with the recent rules that have come in, recent laws, change in laws that have happened. When here we say that D is the husband of E, definitely E is the wife of D, right? Don't, uh, you know, try to 
consider the extreme cases all right so d plus uh, d plus e means d is the husband of e so d is the male person e is the female person e is the wife of d and we have uh, discussed in the video again that we represent a married couple using a double headed arrow so in in our notation whenever you have a double headed arrow like for example in in the diagram somewhere you see that m uh, you know this we we are very clear that m and y are uh, wife and husband right m is the wife of y y is the husband of m and uh, you know the the indication here is this double headed arrow right double headed arrow means they are like coupled right they are a couple so that's the idea now after drawing this uh, 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 diagram you have to now get the actual relationship what relationship how is b related to e what is the relationship between b to e how is b related to e how is b related to e now look at this e is husband husband's sister so so if you see e is you know try to connect d with b first forget about a i think this part is not needed if you if you are a smart person you would have simply neglected this part because the question is asking us to connect b to e so why do we have to worry about the relationship uh, between a and b right anyway if if you understand d's sister's mother right d's sister sister's mother so your sister's mother is your mother so d's sister mother is i mean d's sister's mother so d's mother we can say that b is the mother of d b is the mother of d right these two are siblings remember c and d are siblings now e is husband's mother your husband's mother is your mother in law your husband's mother is your mother in law so we can say that b is the mother in law of e how is b related to e b is the mother in law of e and be very careful you have to read it in the right direction this this question which says how is b related to e answer is mother in law suppose these are interchange how is e related to b how is e related to b the answer would be different right how is e related to b b's daughter's brother b's daughter's brother is b's son right your daughter's brother is your son so b's son son's wife son's wife is daughter in law so in that case our answer would be daughter in law how is e related to b e is the daughter in law of b how is b related to e mother in law so be very careful right usually we find uh, such mistakes are committed because you have not read the question properly right how is b related to e is the question and not how is e related to b so that's about it this is how you draw the family diagram and you must be very clear with the notations and the symbols that we use here right draw it properly and then connect to get the required answer now this is something which all of us know so what is a smart way of solving this question in my view this is a waste of time all that we have done so far is a waste of not not really a waste of time but the same question could have been answered in a uh, smarter method right in a in a smarter way right what is a smart method of solving this question well this this method that i'm going to explain you now need not uh, give you the answer in every case but you will be able to eliminate the options very quickly right and, and the best part is we don't have to draw the family tree see even otherwise even when you draw the family tree it doesn't take so much of time i was not solving this question i was explaining it to you so it has taken so much of time when you do it yourself you'll do it really quick right but now let us see the other way of solving this question right what's the smart way of answering questions from blood relations now in this smart method you just need to focus on two points right there are two important points to be considered point number 1 is the gender and point 2 is the generation gap if you focus on these two then you may you know end up getting the answer without even drawing the family tree right only two points to be observed gender and generation gap right gender and generation gap so for this question where it says how is b related to e just try to see we have to connect b to e how is b related to e so forget about a like we have discussed even in the family tree we need not worry about this only look at b c d e how is b related to e now read the first relationship percentage right we know that percentage means mother so b is the mother of c b is the mother of c b is a female person remember how is b related to e now we have got to know that b is a female person so is grandmother possible yes possible is granddaughter possible yes possible is mother in law possible possible is aunt possible possible is daughter in law possible possible because in all the five options here the gender is female right suppose one of the options suppose if fourth option is given as uncle how is b related to e in the expression now the moment you see b percentage c where percentage means mother you would know that b is a female person so can b be the uncle no i mean uncle is a male person right i mean that shows a male relationship so that's how you can eliminate the options here of course in this case all the five options represent female persons but then if there's any male uh, relationship given in the options you can simply uh, kill that option there right anyway now that we 
have not been able to eliminate any option let's just proceed now what do you do next how do you find out the answer there see we have already looked at the gender so this part is over need not worry about the gender of c d e that's not needed for us because how is b related to e right only b's gender is important e's gender or c and d's gender are not needed what do we look at next the generation gap how much is the generation gap now what do you mean by this generation gap see generation gap between you and your father is one generation gap between your father and yourself is also one of course in one direction you have to take it plus one the other direction you take it as minus one like for example if you are considering the generation gap from your father to you if you have taken it as one then from yourself to your father you should take it as minus one it should be always in the right direction right so you always we come from top to bottom right top down so between your father and yourself the generation gap is one between yourself and your father is minus one now this plus and minus is important because in some cases uh, if you don't uh, look at the sign we, we get a wrong answer right but then gap is one the generation gap is one similarly what is the generation gap between your uh, grandfather and yourself two your grandfather is two generations above right your grandmother two generations above your mother-in-law one generation above what is the gener generation gap between you and your sibling zero between you and your spouse zero between you and your nephew one you're getting it the generation gap between you and your nephew is one your nephew is in the next generation your yourself and your daughter-in-law one so generation gap is the uh, basically the number of uh, not exactly the number of generations but you know the level of generations there right so this is very very important the generation gap concept is very important in eliminating, eliminating the options so see how how it helps us very easy percentage percentage means what mother now you know that mother means a generation gap of one right ampersand ampersand means what sister sister means a generation gap of zero plus plus means husband husband means what generation gap of zero see the husband may be 40 years older than the wife that's a different story but we'll always consider the generation gap to be one right the relationship is important not the age right don't don't try to uh, look at the age of course ages are not mentioned here never usually given in these questions but even if it is given we will not worry about that because our definition of gender gap is by relationship and not by the age so mother is one generation gap uh, uh, husband is uh, you know sister is zero generations difference and between uh, i mean husband again zero generations difference overall from b to e from b to e what is the total gap 1 plus 0 plus 0 1 plus 0 plus 0 1 plus 0 plus 0 1 total is 1 right total is 1 suppose you have 1 1 1 total generation gap would be 3 if you have 1 0 1 total generation gap would be 2 in some cases you may have 1 0 minus 1 when do we take minus 1 suppose d is the son of e d is the son of e so from father to son if you have taken 1 from son to father you have take you have to take minus 1 so that it balances out you're able to follow what we are trying to establish here is the overall generation gap between b and e so if b to c is from top down and d2 is from bottom up then you have to change the sign accordingly all right anyway in this particular case 1 plus 0 plus 0 the total generation gap is 1 so b, which means what b is a female person and one generation above e b is a female person b is a female person and one generation above e now consider these two points and try to look at the options can the relationship be grandmother? No. Grandmother means what? Generation gap of two. We have got only one. So first option eliminated. Can granddaughter be the answer? Granddaughter satisfies the gender part here. But generation gap? No. Eliminated. Mother-in-law? Possible. Why is mother-in-law possible? Because mother-in-law is female. Right? That denotes a female relationship. And the generation gap is one. So that's possible. Right? Aunt? Possible again. Because aunt is female. And generation gap is one. Daughter-in-law? Not possible. See, daughter-in-law is female, but generation gap here comes out to be minus one. Remember, we had discussed that from top to down, we'll take it as positive. From bottom to top, we'll take it as uh, negative. You're getting it? So that way, daughter-in-law means what? One generation below. But what we have got is plus one, not minus one. So even if the option gets eliminated. So there are only two possible answers, either aunt or mother-in-law. Now, because two options are left out, we'll have to, you know, do it a little more meticulously. But let's say even if one of one more option gets cancelled out of three and four, you can you can mark the answer without drawing anything on paper, without drawing the family tree. Again, one one more technique that can be applied here is since a husband and wife relationship has come in between. You see, P plus Q means P is the husband of Q, right? Here there is a plus relationship, which means a husband and wife relationship, in-law relationship will come into picture. You getting it? The in-law relationship will come into picture because this was a blood relation, 
percentage is a blood relation and percent also is a blood relation but this plus sign is a in-law relationship a relationship in-law and the moment relationship in-law comes into picture we know that b and e are from the two different families you're able to follow this is a blood relation this also is a blood relation but plus is not a blood relation which means e is in one family b c d all these three are in the same family b c and d all three belong to the same family but e belongs to some other family there and and that can be seen here also right all you, you look at the family tree b c d are from the same family of course e also belongs to their family only but not a blood relationship so b c d all in the same family e is in the other family so in law relationship would come into picture so that way i can eliminate option 4 as well i can eliminate aunt also and the only option left out is mother in law so option 3 is your answer i hope all of you have followed this see do not go by the length of the explanation let me come to the video uh, for a few seconds right do not go by the length of the explanation i know we have spent maybe 10 minutes or so in arriving at this answer which most of you had answered already but i don't know what method you had followed if you are done by family tree then i think that's a waste of time right because just based on gender and generation gap we are able to eliminate three options and this whole process would not take more than 15 seconds in my view right you just have to look at the symbols and say 1 2 0 minus 1 and all that and you know do that arithmetic sum right plus 1 plus 2 minus 1 0 whatever and based on that kill the options gender again very easy eliminate the options right so i i don't say that this would give you the answer always because it depends like like for example let's say if all the five options are given in such a way that every option denotes a female person or a female relationship with one generation gap i mean five such relationships are not possible but let's say if if a situation like this is given like for example mother mother in law aunt aunt in law you know and things like that then it becomes difficult to answer the question right because all five are female relationships all five are one generation above right or maybe let's say fifth option is given as none of this then you have to be a little careful because you know just because a uh, option has satisfied the gender and the generation gap doesn't mean that it is a correct answer so you have to be a little careful when the fifth option is none of this but then overall in my view this method is really very useful right i mean it will not save you one minute but definitely 5 10 15 seconds depending on how complex the given expression is all right especially it will save a lot of time where uh, the question is reversed where the relationship is given and we are supposed to find out which expression satisfies right in in this particular question you had seen that we have drawn only one family tree and verified what is the relationship uh, from that but suppose the relationship is given to us b is the daughter in law or let's say yeah b is the mother in law of e in which of the following expressions and five expressions are given to you in that case what happens you have to draw you have to draw a family tree for each of these expressions each of the options which will take a lot of time but if you go by gender and generation gap concept you will be able to eliminate the options very easily all right so this may not appear very very useful in this particular case but the concept is definitely very helpful right try to apply it in different types of questions and i'm sure you'll find it uh you know giving you answers much faster all right so that's the smart method i mean this can be applied for almost all the questions in uh, blood relations right so i hope all of you have followed this just practice a few more questions based on this concept and you will get better at it let me just see if there are any comments or anything that i have to discuss here based on this Swati Reddy has mentioned why to see the overall relationship just by checking between B and E is easy. I remember you told this tip in one of your sessions. So, so Swati, I'm glad that you had participated in one of our earlier sessions and you remember the technique and you have successfully applied it here, right? So you can all see what Swati has mentioned, right? Swati has got the answer without drawing the family tree. I I would love to see how many of you had uh, drawn the family tree here. nothing wrong in accepting it honestly if you are drawn the family tree but understand there are better ways of getting the answer right than what you had actually thought so shall we move to the next one i think this one is done yeah nasimilu by the way had answered option 1 he said uh, option 1 grandmother is the answer i don't know where you have gone wrong nasimilu hope you have got the point now right okay so let me share the screen again and present the next question to you all So here's the next question. Same uh, symbols, right? But the question has changed. It says, "What should come in place of the question mark to establish that C is the aunt of E in the expression?" Now this is different. The expression is also given to us. The relationship is also given. But one of the symbols is missing. We have to find out what comes in place of question mark here. 
okay so try to solve this one now i'll give you one minute again but let me tell you it can be answered in less than 15 20 seconds all right okay a few responses to my previous question i had asked how many of you had drawn uh, solved the question using family tree so rishikesh baidya had mentioned that i did not use family tree but ayush thakur and hari krishna have accepted that they had done it using a family tree so i hope you guys have noted the difference right so please follow the smart method from your uh, from from the next time right and we have ajaz ishak who says i'm a web developer how i get success well ajaz you have to first help me understand what is the meaning of success for you because i are you appearing for uh, you know it jobs aptitude test or what exactly do you want to do if it is about competitive exams there are only three things that you have to do ajaz practice practice and more practice these exams are like running races right if you slow down even for a second somebody else would take over so you have to be very very quick and sharp and only practice can help you well we have already got two answers for the current one uh, swati and manohar both of them have marked option 5 i'll wait for a few more responses and then take it up all right so more answers coming in and same response option 5 right Hari Krishna, Narayan, Rishikesh, Manohar, Swati, all five of them have marked option five. Uh, Swati says, "I would like to know when will you teach these online sessions?" Well, Swati, until last week we used to do it at uh, 11 a.m. on Saturdays. From this week onwards, we are changing the schedule to 6 p.m. on Friday. Anyway, if you subscribe to our YouTube channel and Facebook page, you would get notifications of all these. Uh, free live sessions that we do right two more answers have come in fanindra and shrikant reddy these guys have also got option 5 as an answer so i'm sure uh, all of you have got the right answer but then what matters is not just the answer but the method that you followed how much time have you spent and now that you have discussed the smart method which is the use of gender in the generation gap let us solve it without drawing the family tree right look at the question what should come in place of the question mark to establish that c is the aunt of e in the expression so we have to find out which uh, symbol when put in place of question mark would give the relationship that c is the aunt of e c is the aunt of e now in this case simply forget about a and b not needed because we have to connect c with e right we have to connect c with e now there are two symbols between c and e one is an ampersand the other is a question mark and we have to find out what comes in place of question mark now look at ampersand what is ampersand meaning here ampersand means sister so clearly c is a female person and which is what it is supposed to be because c is the aunt he says right so aunt is female so female person and ampersand means what sister sister means generation gap of 0 overall when you look at the question if you want c to be the aunt of e you know that the gender has to be female and the generation gap has to be 1 right gender has to be female and the generation gap has to be 1 c's gender should be female and the generation gap between c and e has to be 1 the gender female is satisfied in the first symbol itself right when he says plus uh, ampersand ampersand means sister so c is female we want the overall generation gap to be 1 ampersand is 0 so clearly whatever comes in question mark should be something which gives you a generation gap of 1 because total of these two has to be 1 are you able to follow we want the total generation gap to be 1 between the first relation in, in the first relation the generation is 0 gap is 0 so in the second one it has to be 1 because total has to become 1 now just i mean you can go by the options one after the other and see which option gives you 1 there can be multiple options which give you 1 but if you are lucky only one option may satisfy dollar dollar means what brother if you put brother here that will give you a 0 eliminated ampersand ampersand means what sister if you put ampersand here generation gap is zero but what we are looking for is one so second option also eliminated plus plus means what husband even if you put husband plus here generation gap remains zero so third option gets eliminated either plus or ampersand when plus and ampersand both have got eliminated how will plus or ampersand be the answer option 5 at the rate or percentage no need to verify now that first four options are wrong it is obvious that option 5 is correct but even if you substitute what happens at the rate at the rate means father 
if it is at the rate it becomes father and you know that if it is father the generation gap should be taken as one similarly percentage percentage means mother right so if you substitute the relationship of mother between d and e the generation gap would be one so see this is how the smart method of gender and generation gap helps us solve these questions without drawing the family tree right let's look at the next one i think we are running short of time only 10 minutes left for the session so let's move a little quick now try this out quickly which among the following options is true if the expression is definitely true now this is a little different here expression is given to us the given expression is definitely true you have to find out which of the given options would be true for the given expression again you can go by gender and generation gap concept but i would suggest not to do that in this case you better draw the family tree it will be easy to verify all the five options you can go by the smart method also but you never know if it would give you the answer or not anyway one minute for this one again and your time starts now swati has got the answer as option three which says b is the aunt of d waiting for others to respond got it option three right good but then if you see swati is very quick compared to others i mean all of you have got the right answer option three but swati could do it really quick so maybe the technique that she had learned in the past is helping us right chalo let's let's look at this now so the same concept again let us let us first try with gender and generation gap see if you are able to eliminate the options if you are confused then we'll probably go for the family tree okay so which among the following options is true if the expression is definitely true so the given expression is definitely true we have to find out which of these options is correct so e is the sister in law of a f is the daughter in law of c b is the aunt of d a is the uncle of e c is the uncle of a so in all these five options you can see that we can find out the gender and the generation gap between the two persons so first of all let us get the overall uh, you know understanding of the genders and the generation gap between persons in the given expression so a plus b means a is the husband of b so a is a male person the generation gap is zero right a is a male person generation gap is zero b ampersand c means b is a sister of c so b is a female person the generation gap is zero right c at the rate d c at the rate means d means c is the father of d c is the father of d means c is a male person generation generation gap is one right d percentage e d percentage e means d is the mother of e d is the mother of e means what d is a female person the generation gap is one again e dollar f dollar f means what uh, e is the brother of f if e is the brother of f E is a male person. The generation gap is zero. Of course, F's generation, uh, F's gender cannot be established here. We cannot find out the gender of F. All right. Quickly check it again. A plus plus means husband, so male zero. Ampersand means sister, so female and zero. Then at the rate means father, so male and one. Percentage means mother, so again female and one. Dollar means brother, so uh, male and zero. So we know that now. For example, if I have to find out the generation gap between A and E, how much is generation gap between A and E? Zero plus zero plus one plus one, total two. Here able to follow generation gap would be two. Now look at the options here. First one, E is the sister-in-law of A. E is the sister-in-law of A, meaning E's gender should be female. And since E is the sister-in-law of A, the generation gap between E and A has to be zero, right? Sister-in-law is in the same generation. So check this. Is E female? No. E is a male person. From our understanding, E is a male person. Yes or no? E is a male person. But according to the question, E is a sister-in-law, which means E is female. So eliminated. First option is eliminated. We don't even have to look at generation gap. Just by gender, we can eliminate the first option. Second option. F is the daughter-in-law of C. F is the daughter-in-law of C means what? F is a female person. And daughter-in-law meaning the generation gap will be minus one. F is the daughter in law of C, so generation gap will be minus one. But like we have discussed, we have no idea about the gender of F. F's gender is not known to us. Do we know F's gender? No. So can we talk about F being female? No. Are you able to follow? Is F male or female? Is not known to us. So how can this be true? You know, this may may not be true. So eliminate it. Third option: B is the aunt of D. If B is the aunt of D, B should be female. Generation gap between B and D has to be one. So check that. Is B female? Yes, B is female. Generation gap between B and D is it one? Yeah, zero and one. Total it is one. So option three satisfies both gender and generation gap criteria. So this may be the correct answer. See, you cannot mark it correct immediately. Verify the other options as well because gender being female and generation gap one can be possible in multiple cases. All right. 
So we'll keep it as it is. Let us verify fourth and fifth options. Fourth option, A is the uncle of E. So A has to be male and generation gap has to be one. Is A male? Yes. Now between A and E, what is the generation gap? Zero plus zero plus one plus one, total two. The generation gap between A and E is two. So A has to be the grandfather, grand uncle, grandfather-in-law, etc. But here he is given as A is the uncle of E. So eliminated. C is the uncle of A. So C has to be male person. And the generation gap between C and A has to be the generation gap C between C and A has to be one. But one point to be noted here is, see, in all, in fact, uh, yeah, I mean, if you look at option five, we are going from C to A. So always check in the uh, correct direction that way. Like for example, go from C to A. So is C male? Yes, C is male. Now from C to A, what is the generation gap? See, don't come from A to C. In fact, in the previous question also, when we were checking option two, I mean, of course, it got eliminated because of gender itself. But when you go to generation gap, he's talking about F being daughter in law of C, right? So you have to go in the reverse direction from F to C, right? I mean, be careful. Like in, in option one also, E is the sister in law of A. With the help of gender itself, it got eliminated. But in case you have to go for generation gap, go from E to A. So here in option five, C is the uncle of A. So we'll go from C to A. We'll go from C to A. Now, when you're going from C to A, what is plus one will become minus one? And minus one will become plus one, if any. You're able to follow? So let's look at it. C should be male. Yes, C is male. Now go from C to A. Zero and zero. Total genera generation gap between C and A is zero. Right? Zero plus zero is zero. But what is given here is one. So fifth option is also eliminated. So we are 100% sure that option one, two, four, and five are wrong. And hence option three has to be the correct answer. Did we draw the family tree? No. Is it a complex process? No. How much time will it take overall? Not more than 30 seconds. See, we have to verify all the options. So it will take a little longer. But very, very neat and simple process. You just have to focus on the gender and the generation gap. I hope all of you have followed. Now, my question to you all before we move to the next one. We have very few minutes left, only a couple of minutes left. But we'll solve one question uh, based on the uh, model three of blood relations. You can disc we, you can learn more about in more about it in detail uh, through our videos. But before we do that, how many of you had solved this question using a smart method? You know what the smart method is, right? The smart method is about gender and generation gap. So how many of you had solved this question using the smart method and who all did it using the family tree? Quick, all of you had given option three as the answer, right? Swati Reddy, Hari Krishna, Manohar, Rishikesh, Fanindra, right? Five of you had marked the answer as option three. But who all followed the smart method? Very easy, right? Just play with the G's and G's, right? The gender and the generation gap. So Swati, yeah, I knew that Swati would have used the smart method because she responded really quick. And she's already mentioned that uh, this technique was discussed earlier in one of her sessions. But Rishikesh Baidya says I am using, I had used family tree this time. Narayan Panda has also used family tree. Manohar Kumar Rishi says family tree. Fanindra says family tree. So guys, why? I'm sure all of you agree that this is a smarter method, right? It saves a lot of time. Don't go by my explanation. I am explaining it to you. I am not solving it for myself. Explanation obviously takes time. But do you all agree that going by gender and generation gap is much faster than drawing a family tree? Even that's easy. It won't take two, three minutes, right? Less than a minute, you'll be able to arrive at the answer. But my point is, even if we can save five seconds using a smart method, why not? Yes or no? Now, okay, we have Pralay Kumar here who says, this is really a great technique, we'll use this next time. So glad to find Pralay learning something new here. But what about others? Fanindra Kumar says, I agree, but... See, this is the problem. Just learning a new technique or knowing a shortcut formula wouldn't help unless you really apply it at the right time, right? Rishikesh says, it'll take some time to practice and yes, we will try. Good, so I think that's what I was... Uh, looking for right waiting to hear you have to practice a little on this and start applying this method never go by family tree when there's a better way to get the answer yeah Narayan also says that the smart method needs to be practiced Abhi has mentioned that okay so new persons coming into chat right Abhi has also mentioned that we need a little practice so I agree I agree that you have to practice a little but I hope all of you have understood it clearly okay Chalo, I think we have no more time left, but uh, I, I would like to solve just one more question before we close the session. So let me get the next one up here.
we will change and go to model 3 now right enough of this model 1 and model 2 model 3 where you know those questions which talks about a man pointing to a photograph and describing a relationship so let me take one such question okay okay let me just present this question to you now so here we go all right so here's the last question of the session today on your screen you have 40 seconds to try this out and your time starts now it says pointing to a man in a photograph a lady said the sister of the son of this man is my mother-in-law how is the husband of the lady related to the man in the photograph these are very interesting questions right i wish i could do more of such questions but we have a time constraint here i'll have to close it after this but never mind like i said you can always log into our learning portal and watch these videos anytime you want any number of times you want right at, at your own pace place and time so do check out our programs which can help you get ready 24 by 7 all right time is up and only one response so far which has come from narayan panda and he says the answer has to be option three sun all right so time now to discuss this the question says pointing to a man in a photograph a lady said the sister of the son of this man is my mother-in-law how is the husband of the lady related to the man in the photograph now even these questions are usually answered using the family tree but i i would say that you can avoid it if, if you just try to do it mentally right all you need to do is break this complex looking statement into multiple parts smaller parts simplify each of those smaller parts and then stitch them all to get the exact relationship right so let me just write the statement once the sister of the son of this man is my mother-in-law all right that's the exact statement there right the sister of the son of this man is my mother-in-law now one point that you all have to observe here or uh, you know note here when answering such questions is to establish who is the speaker and who is he pointing to like in this case pointing to a man in the photograph a lady said a lady said so wherever we have my mine right in the statement it refers to the lady like for example the sister of the son of this man is my mother-in-law now my is who here the lady is talking here right so my can be replaced with lady or the lady's mother-in-law you're getting it similarly uh, of this man this he she that refers that that pronoun refers to the man here because she, this lady was pointing to a man in the photograph right so if you read the statement it says the sister of the son of this man now who is this here this is that man of course it has been given this man only but the point is if it let's say uh, he is suppose the statement starts like uh, she is the son she is the son and so on then she here refers to the person in the photograph so you can directly replace she with the photograph or the person in the photograph or the woman in the photograph so that it becomes easier to connect right anyway so after doing that the statement now looks like the sister of the son of this man or yeah i was trying to kill this and replace it with man but anyway this man is given here so the sister of the son of this man is the lady's mother-in-law now try to break it into smaller parts like i've mentioned now see this part the sister of the son of this man you know sister of the son look at this part the first part sister of the son your son's sister is your daughter right sister of the son sister of the son becomes daughter right the sister of the son sister of the son is daughter so you kill this and replace with this daughter replace this with daughter the sister of the son so daughter now the daughter of this man is the lady's mother-in-law the daughter of this man is the lady's mother-in-law who is the mother-in-law of this lady the daughter here so lady's mother-in-law is the daughter of course here we don't have uh, a very long statement it's it's small enough that only one uh, simplification is helping us establish the relationship but there may be a case where you have to do it you know into two three parts simplify each of the parts and then connect right here of course there are only three persons left in the picture now the daughter of the man who's the lady's mother-in-law so maybe now you'll uh, draw a simple family tree and connect them right lady's mother-in-law 
the daughter of this man is lady's mother-in-law so here's the man this man's daughter you know use the actual terms that are given in the statement so that you don't get confused right man's daughter right is this lady's mother-in-law so this lady's husband who's the lady's mother-in-law lady's husband's mother you are able to follow again don't don't get confused that how is the daughter above the husband the daughter is for the man for the husband she is the mother you are able to follow so basically the point is what the daughter is daughter of this man so daughter of this man is the lady's mother in law so man daughter and lady how is the mother in law relationship established lady's husband's mother so husband's mother husband's mother is same as the man's daughter you are getting it or if you want a clearer picture i am sure all of you have understood this already but if you want a clearer picture what you can do is man's daughter is this person and she is nothing but the mother in law mother in law of this lady right so you can say mother in law of this lady so lady is husband's mother when I mean, for the husband she is the mother for the lady she is mother in law so the point is this man's daughter is the mother in law of the lady or mother of this lady's husband now what is he asking us to find out he is not asking us to find out the relationship usually the question says what is the relationship between the man and the lady i mean usually the question is about the person in the photograph and the person who is the speaker but it is not that the question says how is the husband of the lady related to the man in the photograph the husband of the lady this person how is this person related to this man you are able to follow how is the husband related to this man now this husband's mother's father you getting it husband's mother i mean she is not the mother in law of the mother in law of the husband she is the mother in law for the lady right husband's mother husband's mother is this man's daughter so your your mother is somebody's daughter mean that somebody is your father in law right and and to be specific she this this man is your maternal father in law or you are the maternal sorry not father in law maternal grandfather i'm sorry your mother's father right your mother's father is your father uh, grandfather mother's father is your grandfather right to be specific your maternal grandfather but then the question is how is the husband related to the man how is the husband related to the man man's daughter's son daughter's son your daughter's son is your grandson maternal grandson so option 1 would be the answer so don't mark maternal grandfather as the answer maternal grandfather would be the answer if the question is reversed how is the man related to the lady's husband but the question is how is the husband of the lady related to the man so the husband of the lady is this man's grandson maternal grandson so option 1 is your answer okay option 1 would be the answer so that's about it with this we come to the end of this session like i said i wish i could do a few more questions never mind we'll we'll meet again we meet every week with these free live sessions brought to you by talent sprint which helps you uh, which we hope helps you uh, you know enhance your learning and get ready for these aptitude tests that you have to undergo for your dream it job okay so wish to see you all in the next session as well right you can get the details by subscribing to our youtube channel and following our facebook page right and like i mentioned if you'd like to explore about our programs which are for your it jobs aptitude test prep or exams like amcat cocubes etc you can visit our website which is talentsprint.com talentsprint.com or call us on our toll free number that is 1800 102 right 1800 okay to get all the details about our programs okay so that's about it thank you all for joining us joining us in this session remember practice is the key right simply knowing these techniques would not help right the more you practice the easier it gets like like all of you had mention uh, during the session right that we'll practice this and then start using it from the next time onwards so i wish to see you all applying these smart methods and getting ahead of others in in your uh, exams all right so keep practicing and take very good care of yourselves i'll see you in the next session bye hi everyone welcome to this session on frequently asked oops questions in mcat exams in mcat exams oops question form a major part of the programming section out of the 25 questions 6 to 7 questions would generally be from oops and these are very moderate level questions not very intricate questions that you would have to spend more time on so if you have grasp 
on uh, general topics like polymorphism, abstraction, objects, classes, basics of OOPs. It's very easy and quick to get through all these 5-6 questions and be sure that you'll score these questions. Hello everyone, welcome to this free live session which is on uh, trees and graphs. As we have seen in earlier videos also about trees and uh, graphs, today in this session we are going to see some, we are going to uh, take some questions which are coming from trees and graphs most frequently uh, in various tests, mostly in AMCAT and we will try to solve it and there are many other different uh, types of variations on uh, the variations of questions that are framed on trees and graphs but we are looking into the uh, type of question which is uh, generally difficult for a student to uh, answer and uh, we will try to solve them and we will see a few other types of questions that are framed on these topics in the uh, sessions later.